What is up, everybody? Welcome to Party on Broad. It is Dives, Mr. Crockpot on Twitter. It's go time. What's up, Steven? We have Steven on Twitter at Philly Fanatic YT. Make sure you follow him on YouTube at uh, Steven Conrad Jr. How you doing, man? What is up, Chris? I am so ready. This has been ever since that ball dropped out of Alshon's fingers. I've been waiting for this moment. Let's kick some divisional ass this weekend. What do you think? Let's go. Let's go. Let's fly, Eagles, fly. Uh, the Eagles play their first game versus the Washington Redskins on Sunday at 1 o'clock. I'm just so pumped up. How about you? Are you pumped? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm so ready for this. Let's go. <sighs> so, on tap for today's Party on Broad, I'm going to go through my top five storylines uh, for the Washington Redskins game. Ready to get started, man? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. First off, I have two honorable mentions to lead off with. Uh, my first honorable mention, the gang is back. Uh, this is the first time we're going to see Brandon Brooks, Ronald Darby, Derek Barnett, Fletcher Cox, Nigel Bradham. The gang is back. We're finally going to get, going to, get to see the whole game, whole gang on the field together for the first time. Quick question. The birds come out flat in the first quarter. They haven't played at all together during the preseason do Eagles fans have the right to boo? Go ahead. So I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer here because depending on what crowd is listening to our response here, you may get a different response. And I feel like some of the Eagles players really understand the feel of the crowd they've been playing here for many different years. So if they're getting booed, they're going to be like, they're not going to be like, oh man, you know, I, I don't like the city's fans. They're going to be like, oh, we got to pick it up. These guys are counting on us. They want a party down Broad Street again. It's, it's crazy. I absolutely should not boo. Um, I think this is the new norm uh, with preseason moving forward in the NFL. In fact, I think we're going to start seeing this more in other sports like the NBA. Uh, preseason, you know, NBA starters not playing as much. Please, please don't boo. Um, I understand the Philly fan more than anyone, but this is a game that we're going to see them come out flat. I think that's a given, right? I don't think I think the odds are definitely in the Eagles' favor of, you know, rust, uh, the offensive line not playing together, um, some misjudgment calls. Um, I definitely see this being a slow spark running out the gate. That's my number. That's my first honorable mention. My second honorable mention is red zone offense and 12 personnel. I don't know about you, Stephen, but I am jacked up to see Dallas Goddard and Zach Ertz take the field this year. Uh, here's my first question about that. How do you see the balance uh, this year in terms of targets between Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard? What do, you, what do you expect? Well, this is not a knock on Zach Ertz in any way possible. Um, his production's probably going to go down this season. That's not a bad thing. We have more weapons, and this team has – they want Carson Wentz wants to move the ball around, and we have Deshaun Jackson now on this team as well. We have a way better backfield now. The ball's going to move around, so I think – Dallas Goddard's going to get more touches than he did last year, and Zach Ertz's touches are going to decrease. Maybe not a lot, maybe a little. We'll have to see. I think last year you had, you know, Ertz way up here, Dallas Goddard here. I think, yeah, like, exactly. like, I think we both agree, like, right around here, like a 60 40 type of thing. Yeah. I think Goddard's going to be wide open in that middle mm -hmm. of the field this year. Um, you have guys like Alshon, Deshaun, um, Jordan Howard, Miles Sanders in the backfield. Zach Ertz. I mean, there's so many weapons on offense. Dallas Goddard. The, the Eagles love to run 12 personnel more than any other team in the NFL. This is the year that Dallas Goddard is going to be left wide open in that middle of the field. For sure. Let, I hope he takes full advantage of it, and I think he will. All right. So huge, huge expectations for Dallas Goddard. Um, my number five storyline for the Washington Redskins game is the running back rotation. Um, who's going to be the premier running back on the Philadelphia Eagles? Will it be Jordan Howard? Will it be Miles Sanders? How much do we see of Darren Sproles? So many questions remaining in the backfield for Sunday. Uh, to me, this is me. I don't know about you, Steven. 
Uh, Miles Sanders is the most talented back on this roster. I know, he hasn't played a single game yet. Um, I love the way he bursts through the hole. I love his ability to make the first guy miss. Uh, the real question remains, when will Doug Peterson make the switch? I don't think it's a matter of, um, I, th I think it's just a matter of when this will happen. Will it be like at the beginning of the season, week one? Will it be the middle of the season, maybe towards the end? Um, but I think there's zero, zero, zero chance that Jordan Howard gets a big contract from the Eagles. I think that's a given. Um, what do you expect with Miles Sanders and Jordan Howard in week one? Go ahead, man. So I, I completely agree with what you just said. I think Jordan Howard... Howard's probably going to be treated as the lead back, at least for this weekend, just because he's a vet in this league. He's on a contract year. I don't know how much the coaches really consider that, but they're going to go with the guy who's been in this league and has proven he can be a lead back. Miles Sanders, that's not a knock on him. He may steal that job at some point this season. I don't, we don't expect Jordan Howard to get like 20 or more carries, right? No, I, I don't expect that, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely hoping that we have a heavy running attack especially these first few weeks. Um, that's, I think, you know, one of the biggest keys of this game is how quickly the Eagles offensive line gels and dominates mm -hmm. versus the Washington Redskins. We're going to get a rusty Carson Wentz. You know, they're, Deshaun Jackson, Carson Wentz, as much as we heard about them during preseason and training camp, they're going to be, uh, they're not going to be on the same page. We're going to see mistakes. You know, we're going to see some, maybe some routes run incorrectly. Who knows? Um, but establishing the running game, I think, is one of the biggest keys to this game. Um, controlling the line of scrimmage. I know it's, you know, we always talk about that in football, but that is the biggest, my number four key to this game. And on the other side, check this out, dude. We also have, um, on the Redskins end, we also have Darius Geis uh, suiting up for the Redskins versus Zach Brown versus his old team. Um, Zach Brown is a, is a new linebacker for the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, he's been solid during training camp and preseason. So that little Zach Brown versus Darius Geist little matchup, that could be a little interesting. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, you know, who knows? Maybe they had some little locker room beef that they want to settle between each other. I'm, I'm all for it. I love I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. So um, Eagles shutting down the shutting down the running game on that, on that end, um, establishing the running game on offense. Um, that is definitely one of the biggest storylines for me. That's my number four storyline. Um, any last comments about that? Yeah, just to add, I've been, that's like one of my things. Whenever people are talking to me about the Philadelphia Eagles, especially on offense, I'm all about running the football. I don't care who your quarterback is. You need to have a running game. It makes the life of literally everybody easier and better on the offensive end. And it all comes down to the offensive line, like you said. And, and if you look back to the uh, I don't know if you remember, we started off pretty hot. That one game, it always comes to my mind for some reason against the uh, San Diego Chargers where Laguerre Blunt went off for like 200 rushing yards. So, hey, I'd be all for that if it happened this weekend against the Redskins. So you're, you're a time of possession guy is what I'm guessing, what I'm gathering. Yeah, like control the game, you know, regardless of how talented your defense is, build a lead and control the clock. Protect the lead. Uh, lock your doors. Watch where you sleep tonight because Chip Kelly's going to get you, man. He's going to get you. It's coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm more of a time of possession guy, not the amount of plays you run, if, if, you, if you're catching what I'm saying here. I fully agree. Man. <laughs> time of possession, controlling the line of scrimmage. It's the, the number two, the two truths of the NFL winning in football is controlling the clock and getting to the quarterback. I don't think mm -hmm. anyone disagrees with that. At least I hope not, because that is just, <laughs> as much as the NFL wants to adapt and mold um, as it you know gets older and older and faster with faster, speedier receivers and quarterbacks and all that, it still remains, man. Nothing, mm -hmm. nothing really changes in football. It's about controlling the line of scrimmage, getting to the quarterback, period. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right on. All right, let's move on to my number three storyline versus the Washington Redskins. Mike Rowe. Here we go. Mike Rowe, um, the offensive coordinator, and his first quarter offense is where I'm leading with. 2018. Um, well, first of all, Steven, you had a really good write-up on this. Uh, you had an article on Eels need to start fast. Well, what was kind of the summary of that article? So basically, I think I had like four key points. Um, 
one of them being is talent. You got to utilize the talent we have. A lot of us remember, remember last year after acquiring Golden Tate for a third round pick that Mike Grow didn't know how to implement the guy into the offense. We can argue fit and everything like that, but the guys we acquired in the offense ideally fit this team. Um, balance is a key one. He needs to establish a run game to open up the pass or vice versa. Um, but Carson can't be out there throwing... You know, it can't be like a 80 to 20 ratio no. or something like that. We need more of a balance. Um, forget what other key points I said. Um, I fully agree with that. Like, you can't have Carson Wentz throwing 40 to 50 times a game. Yeah. If that happens, there are there will be major red flags. Even if the Eagles win and Carson Wentz throws 50 times but gets hit like five to six times, like there will be major red flags mm -hmm. uh, from the fans if that happens. Exactly. And, you know... Like, people really don't realize, like, we always say Deshaun Jackson is, like, arguably the best deep threat of all time. I think they should have him on the field in running situations. You know what I mean? Like, just the fact that he's on the field and all that stuff. It's probably basic NFL coaches. Yeah, I think what you'll see is... You there, Chris? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. You there? I can hear you. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Um, I think what you'll see is the Eagles establishing the run early to set up the pass. Um, I think we're going to get into that maybe a little bit pretty soon. Um, but what I expect from Mike Grow is, like you said, Stephen, start fast. In 2018, they were second last in the NFL in points in the first quarter with 3.2, a pathetic 3.2 points. In 2017, uh, they were um, a second best in the NFL with 6.4 points per quarter. That is just so many times. You look at the last five games in the season openers, uh, two of those games, the Eagles went down 17 to three versus the Jaguars at the, oh, wow. the first Never half. Mind. And then there was another game against someone, I'm drawing a blank where they were down like 20 to nothing. Um, if you go back to the last five games in the season openers with the Eagles, it's it's been it's like sloppy sloppy good game against the Cleveland Browns that was Carson Wentz's uh, opener uh, mm -hmm. debut. I mean, still remember him throwing that that bomb to um, Jordan Matthews. Yeah, first on, drive on the first possession. I was uh, still remember that uh, vividly. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you have like there's a, the next two very sloppy. Uh, mo most of those games relied on an Eagles you know, really coming back and playing well in that fourth quarter. Um, Mike Grell, he needs to start fast, um, get, get the fans behind the team, get Carson Wentz in rhythm. That, that is such a huge thing for the, the first week. Um, mm -hmm. Any last comments about that, man? No, I completely agree. And honestly, I'm getting really nervous thinking about it the more you talk about it. <laughs> we're we're going to dive into some predictions very soon. Um, I'm just... just I, just, I don't see it happening, but we're going to get into that very soon. All right, my number two storyline versus the rest Washington Redskins, the Eagles defensive line. Derek Barnett is back. Um, you have Fletcher Cox versus Eric Flowers. Um, it's going to be laughable. Um, I think F Cox is just going to throw him across the field all day long. Um, like you said, time of possession is really going to be earned right here. Uh, I want to see Malik Jackson and Derek Barnett routinely getting into the backfield um, against Case Keenum, causing havoc, um, knocking Case Keenum on his ass all day long. Um, the, Re the Redskins' left tackle is Donald Penn because we know Trent, uh, Trent Williams is still holding out, right? So this guy named Donald Penn, 36 years old, um, if, this, if there was a game for Derek Barnett to, to really stand out. This really is it. Um, what do you expect from Derek Barnett this year or in week one? You nailed it on the coffin. I mean, this, what a perfect opportunity. You know, your first game back and he has an ideal matchup like that. He could really make a name for himself here in week one and show why we use the first, our first round pick on him. The Eagles are relying on their defensive tackle position. Malik Jackson, Fletcher Cox. Mm -hmm. You know, they're really, really relying on those guys to set the edge, set the tone for the defense, you know, and on the ends, everything else will kind of fall into play. Derek Barnett has not played at all this preseason, and I don't know about you, man, but I, I'm worried as shit about this guy. 
Um, you know, he, he was healthy his first year, fought with injuries his second year. Um, efficiency wise, he's good. I mean, when he's on the field, he's making plays, he's getting to the quarterback. Um, the sack numbers really aren't there. Um, this is such a huge year for Derek Barnett and the Eagles are putting all their eggs in the Derek Barnett basket. What do you, what do you expect from Derek Barnett? How many sacks? I, I mean, this has got to be a big year for him. I'm really rooting for him. I want him to be good as an Eagles fan. You should want him to be good. If I were to put a number on it, I mean, I'm not sure if he reaches, if he hovers around that 10 range, how would you feel about that? Oh, I'll be happy. I'd be very possible. Nine to 10 sacks. I'd be very happy with multiple, um, you know, quarterback hurries and all that. You know, the loss of Chris Long and Michael Bennett cannot be stated enough. Michael mm -hmm. Bennett was tops in the league in terms of getting to the quarterback, not necessarily sacks, but getting into the backfield, tackles for losses, uh, tops in the league, man. And he's gone and no one really wants to talk about it. And, you know, we're relying on Derek Barnett, who I think is very, very talented. But dude, the depth at defensive end, if he gets hurt, dude, that everything changes exactly and you know i don't know if you agree with me on on this or not but that's kind of part of the reason why i really wanted this team to be aggressive towards jadavian Clowney. honestly i don't know how you feel about that but seeing how seattle acquired him for what they gave up i mean shoot missed out but hey it's what it is i was all Eric barnett can do it i was all in on Clowney. um the eagles are in win now mode um mm -hmm. i i don't care if we had to give up a third round pick and yeah. like, it's not like they're going to hit on that pick anyway. Don't. <laughs> um, yeah. But a third round pick and a potential backup player. I would have done yeah. that in a heartbeat. Yeah, why not? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, a lot of people were talking about, well, it's a luxury addition. Oh, Who cares? On, man? They being clowny. <laughs> there's, there's, Eagles fans should know more than anybody else. Having a healthy rotation at defensive end, defensive tackle, is, is hands down one of the most important things in the NFL. Exactly, and it was a Super Bowl, right? The defensive end was the guy who came up with the, sh the strip and the recovery, right? Yeah, that, that bothers me. <laughs> or you ever, you ever hear like that, like a little side note that just one of my biggest pet peeves is like, they say in Eagles history, what is the best play in Eagles history? And everyone always goes immediately, oh, the Philly special, you know, the Philly Philly. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? What? Like, there's no way you call that the best play in Philly's history. You know what the best play in Philly history is? The Brandon Graham strip sack. By hey, it's up on my wall right there. I don't know if you can see it too well. There's Brady. <laughs> I mean, it, it, that play won them the Super Bowl. Hands yeah. down. Uh, yeah, I started ball. screaming like a, a schoolgirl at that point. I couldn't believe it. That's awesome. I, I literally, so I didn't scream. I fell to the ground and just started crying. No, I, I, mm. Yeah, that came as well. <sighs> my my immediate reaction was hit the floor. It was like the first because you know Tom Brady was gonna score a fucking touchdown. Oh yeah, that was happening. They, they were just shredding the Eagles defense at that time. And as soon as Brandon Graham got that ball loose, I died. I, I know. I was died. like, no way. That play never happens in Eagles history, and it did. <laughs> that was just one of the most epic moments of my life. And I remember, oh my god, completely collapsing on the ground. Uh, it was like that, like, come to Jesus moment, like, this is going to happen. <laughs> like, that, that game, I was on my toes that entire game. Obviously, it was back and forth, back and forth. And, yeah, we should we should do a whole party on Broad and, like, recollect, recollect about this Eagle Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, I got plenty of content for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so great. great. Uh, let's go to my number one storyline versus the Washington Redskins. Will the real Carson Wentz please stand up? Are we going to get the 2017 Carson Wentz that was on pace to win the MVP? Or are we going to get the 2018 Carson Wentz that made bad decisions with the football? Carson Wentz had his debut versus the Cleveland Browns uh, two years ago in 2017. He played great. The offense is stacked this year. Expectations couldn't be any higher. What do you want to see from Carson Wentz during uh, week one? Go ahead, Steven. Well, I mean, it's to be expected. He may miss a few throws here and there, but listen, he's got the guys now. I think he's a much smarter and mature quarterback. He doesn't have Nick Foles breathing down his spine. 
he's going to make the right plays. He's going to take shots down the field if they're there, but I don't think he's going to really force anything and try to make superhero-esque plays. He's going to have a good... I think when it's all said and done, when the clock hits zero, he's going to have a good game and everybody's going to be like, this is our guy, you know? This is why we signed him. Please, 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 baby Carson Jesus, play smart, throw the ball away when you need to, live for the next down, don't play for that extra yard, run out of bounds. We need you for a week... 14, 15 in the yep. playoffs. We don't need you for this this game versus the Washington Redskins. Uh, I, th- I think there was a recent interview with Doug Peterson like yesterday or the day before and Carson Wentz. Like, that has seemed to be the emphasis of the entire offseason. You know, working with Carson, making better judgments with the football. Um, as great as he was in 2017, there were some plays in 2018 where he threw the ball in double coverage when he had a guy wide open in the flat. Yep. You know, like for, or something, yeah. Easy first down. Like there's been mm-hmm. several of those that you would never expect Carson Wentz to do, but it was there. Make the smart play. Live for the next down. Stay healthy, man. I feel like we've been talking about this with Joel Embiid for the last several oh years. Oh my God. <laughs> <Here we are. laughs> don't run, don't jump into the stands, man. Just like <laughs> with <me. laughs> Oh wow. It's crazy how it works, huh? I know. I, I'm expecting huge things from Carson Wentz this year. Obviously, um, he got his contract. Is he an MVP? Who is the real Carson Wentz? I think these are all questions that we're waiting to see. I, don't, I personally, I don't know about you, man. I'll ask you. Um, I don't think I know who Carson Wentz is. Do you know who Carson Wentz is? I think so. I'm going to say I'm about 80% sure if we were to say. I think his MVP season is definitely rep. He can definitely repeat that t- type of season. I think you got to look at it this way. Enough negativity, guys. Last season, this could be a, a really big stepping block for him. He can really look back, and I'm sure he did all offseason. It's going to make him a better player and a better quarterback. I fully agree. Um, I don't want him to stop running the ball. You know, I have no problem with him reading the defense, making the first guy miss, but get rid of the ball. That's yep. my point. Is mm-hmm. You know, if there's nothing there, just throw it away. Don't, yeah. don't don't try to prolong the play. Don't try to like make be a playmaker. Don't do your you know your your Brett Favre impression. And don't get hurt, man. We, we can't do this anymore. It's one of those things. It's like one of those guilty pleasures in the NFL. Like where is uh, don't do it, but if you succeed, it's amazing, right? Like we just all praise it. And that was such an amazing play by Carson Wentz, but. It's definitely a major storyline heading into this season. Where am I with Carson Wentz? I'm right in the middle. I, I still need to be. I still need him to prove to me that he's that that MVP caliber player. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got a lot to earn. I think between the years, he's one of the best in the game. It's just yeah. a matter of execution that I'm waiting to see. I agree completely. All right, ready to do some predictions? Let's do it. All right. All right, uh, why don't you lead off, man? So do you want me to uh, pretty much give what I expect to see in a score? Yep. All right, so um, listen, I think the offense is going to start off slow, but I don't think it's going to be as slow as we think. There's just too many weapons, and it's such a, a – well, to be honest, the strength of the Redskins is probably their defense and their defensive line. Um, I, I just think the Eagles are ready for this moment. Um, it's probably going to be close to start off. I, I honestly don't see how this Washington offense is going to score much at all. There's not a whole lot of talent there, and the talent they do have is missing, like you said, on the offensive line. I know Jordan Reed, is he in like percussion, concussion protocol, I believe? I don't know if he's going to play or not. I don't know. Um, Final score, this is my prediction, and I want to see how close I am. I do this with every game. Eagles 31, Redskins 13. Woo! I love it. I am much more negative than you are. <laughs> All right, so I I see this going. Oh, man. Yeah, dude. I, 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 you know, in my heart, the Eagles win 82 to 10. But my gut feeling is this is going to be a super, super ugly game. Um, I think it's going to be a very ugly start. Um, Not because of the talent. The Eagles are by far more talented than the Washington Redskins. No one's denying that. But what I expect to see, false starts, holding calls, uh, delay of games, you know, one or two bounces not going our way, you know, some bullshit 
referee call it like I don't so there's going to be some like um, things that I think in the first half that are really going to really test our patience with this team um, I think it's going to be a slow start and I think we're going to see the Eagles offense finally start clicking in that like mid third quarter um, I see the Eagles winning 19 to 17 on a less than two minute field goal to win the game I hope I'm wrong. I, I really feel like uh, you look at the last five years, dude, four of those five last years have been um, just brutal, slug it out, ugly, ugly games. I don't think there's any exception. I think this is, this is just going to follow suit with all those other games. What do you think? Man, I, I hope it's not that. I mean, I, I can't hand close games are tough as it is. I mean, the whole Toronto series against the Sixers, it'd be nice just to start the season off Flying high, wasn't it? You have to bring up the Toronto series, man. Come on. I'm sorry. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> I, I do. I, this is like a typical NFC East game where this is the Philadelphia Eagles. I've been, I'm almost 35 here. I've seen it way too often. Everything on paper is aligning that yeah. this should be an Eagles blowout game. How many times does that happen? Never. So, I mean, this is like all for me personally, I think this leaning towards a really tough game gut out uh hopefully this game will bring the team together type of win for the eagles uh that's my take that, that's just my gut feeling um anyway any last comments no i mean you know you're that's completely your opinion and everything we'll see who who predicts the score the closest but let me just add to that real quick yeah i feel like the redskins are in this weird like period where they're you know they drafted Dwayne Haskins and a lot of people there believe he's going to be their guy but they're starting Case Keenum so honestly I don't know if there's really tanking in the NFL ever because a lot of bad teams can beat good teams but I I just feel like this is one of those rare cases where the game might just go as many people predict it maybe you know what I mean it may be a blowout just for that reason I mean, you look at the past history, the Eagles have won the last four games versus the Redskins. The Redskins haven't beaten the Eagles at home since 2016. Um, everything points to an Eagles win. Right? Like, mm -hmm. that, For sure. It's, let's be clear. Um, I just feel, feel like this is like, every, like with no one playing in the preseason, everyone trying to think that, you know, they're just going to step on the field and everything's going to click. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I. I am not in the camp of, oh, you know, the preseason means nothing. I'm in the camp that get them on the field, get the timing down. You know, so much of football, especially between Wentz and Deshaun Jackson, it's all timing. And mm -hmm. that's that's just my gut feeling. I hope I'm dead wrong, man. I really hope. Please, please, please be wrong. Um, so make sure you follow Steven on Twitter at PhillyFanaticYT and follow his YouTube page. He does so much good stuff. Uh, if you ain't following it, you're missing out. It is Stephen Conrad Jr. on YouTube. Uh, make sure you follow um, all of our Eagles content on the Painted Lines. Uh, you can follow that at Eagles TPL. Um, I'm Chris, um, Mr. Crockpot on Twitter. Can I get an Eagles chant? Doom, 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 doom. Fly, Eagles, fly. On the road, road to victory. Fight, fight, fight. Fly, Eagles, fly. <laughs> All right, I'll do one for you. Ready? E A G L E S Eagles. Woo! -hoo. Go birds, baby. Uh, we'll see you on Sunday for our reaction pod. Take care. Stay awesome. Russell Westbrook. You love the